Leah, and can I just say what an honour it is to be here today to do this talk. Okay, so, yes, I can. And this is my story about, yes, how I can get the world fit now through social media. So let me start at the beginning, where it all began. And I'll just say here, so I'm no Einstein, but I do have a platform and I have a passion and I have a mission. So for me, as a young child, school was not a particularly great time. I was very bullied. And I think a lot of people just assume because I do fitness, I was a really sporty kid at school. But far from it, I was the one that had every excuse to get out of games. And I don't know if any of you ever experienced this where in sports they used to do it where they used to pick a member for the team and I was always the last one to get picked and uh, so when I left school I then decided I wanted to be this really strong confident woman and I decided the only way to do that was to really challenge myself and that was to go and join the army and I remember the day that I told my parents that I wanted to go and join the army and my dad is an incredible international folk singer my mum is the most talented artist so they're not really typical army parents and they were very shocked but it was the most incredible experience for me because when I was in the army I then couldn't have any excuses to get out of doing sports and so then I realised actually I could be fit, I could be strong and it helped me get over confidence issues and in those five years I served in the army I as a woman, it was very tough because when I joined, it was in 1990, yeah, 1992, and there weren't very many women in the army. So I had to really work hard to prove myself. And on, and one of the reasons as well, this will make you laugh, one of the reasons why I actually joined, um, joined the army was to travel the world. So in those five years, I went to Aldershot, Guildford, Reading and London. I actually didn't get out of South East England. That is literally where I stayed. And again, that was due to the fact that there weren't really many other women in the army. And then this is my beautiful sweetheart, fiancé. And very sadly, on August 20th, 1992, he got killed. <coughs> and I'm mm, sorry. So this was a big turning point for me <clears throat> and my whole world completely changed and I then decided I wanted to come out of the army and the two things that got me through that were my family and fitness. So I then threw myself into fitness because it was a way to get over the pain of losing my fiancé. Anyway, <clears throat> so I then qualified as a personal trainer and spent years doing lots of different courses. And I was so excited for my first job of becoming a personal trainer. And on the first day in my gym, the gym I was working in, the big boss was showing me around and he said, now, so in the gym, we have got um, 16 bits of cardiovascular equipment. So I said to him, but how many members do you have here in the gym? And he said, well, we have 1,800 members. So my answer was, well, if you have 1,800 members and only 16 bits of cardiovascular equipment, what happens if everyone all turns up at once? And his answer was, well, they won't. Only 10% will ever come here and use the gym. And for me, I found that really sad. I could see they liked it because they could see they made money from it. But for me, being a trainer and experiencing the benefit of being healthy and fit, I was like, but I want to reach out to those other 90% of those people. You know, how can I do that? And so <laughs> then I decided, or I had an idea of a way that I could connect with those people that didn't want to go to the gym. So I decided, even though I'm very dyslexic, that I was going to write a book. And this book was designed so it could teach people literally in their front room how they could get healthy and fit because the benefit of that, it will also then help with their confidence. So I went to a publisher and I had my book signed up straight away. And the book was a great success. It was sold internationally. It was translated into three different languages. And then there were lots of 
new doors than that opened but I learned the hard way and for years and years I got <coughs> really ripped off by publishers, I got taken for granted, I spent fortunes on getting new websites done, listening to kind of like empty promises but for me I was just passionate about making a difference so I sort of believed a lot of what they said and then an exciting thing happened for me and that was social media was born. And I could then see this incredible opportunity and then platform for me to kind of give and share my knowledge, what I'd learn and share with everyone else. Because now I knew that I didn't need a publisher, I didn't need a TV company, I'd been told I couldn't write books, I was dyslexic, I was told I didn't have the face for TV. Um, <clears throat> so then with social media, Everyone was out taking selfies. Um, okay, I do take a few selfies, but not as many as this person here. <laughs> and this is where then I just knew now I had this opportunity <clears throat> to help get people fit around the world. And this was the great thing. Before being a trainer and working in a gym, you're just limited to your demographics. But now with social media, this platform meant I could reach out to everyone all over the world. So I was then for two years, probably even a little bit longer, I literally just self-taught myself. I just decided to, and I gave up everything. I got rid of all materialistic things. I literally spent two years in a room just learning. And I learned everything from how to build a website. I then designed my own app. I learned all about the coding. I learned about video editing. I learned about SEO, just literally everything. Because I'd been told so many times, no, you can't do this, I thought, yes, I can. And no one's going to stop me, and I'm just going to learn. And this is the great thing with technology. One of the reasons we're here talking about this today is that it gives you the ability to learn. So I just, and the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. And it was a very exciting thing, just learning all these new skills. And then I have my platform, and my biggest platform has been YouTube. And YouTube, for me, is where I can offer people nutrition, I do nutritional videos, so I talk to them about nutrition, I talk to them about motivation, and I talk to them about fitness. And the irony is, through having my YouTube channel, I then got contacted by the top YouTubers in the UK, the Sakona Jolis, and Anna came to me as she'd watched all my videos on fitness, she came to me, and um, so I started to train her, and I've been training them for the last couple of years. <coughs> So the benefits of fitness, as we all know, and this is where every single one of you guys here in this room will all benefit from being healthy and fit because it reduces the risk of disease, it reduces anxiety, and it's just something that can actually be free. And in this world today, there are so many problems with obesity, and this is where it's so good to be able to just tell people you don't have to join a gym that you're not going to turn up to, you can literally do so much at home. And the list goes on. I mean, I could have just written so many there. Exercise and fitness is really what we should all be doing. So really today, this is where I wanted to say, like, yes, I can. So I've written now 21 books. I was also told, as said, that I don't have face for TV, but you know what? That doesn't matter. Who cares what our faces look like? And I think that's the other thing. There's so much about body image and about confidence. And what I've been able to do with my YouTube channel is create an online community, which is called hashtag Lucy Squad. And what's been incredible for me is now as a sort of older woman, I can look back and when I was at school, when I was bullied, didn't have any confidence, I feel I can reach out to now so many, especially young girls, but also people of all ages and even young boys and teach them, you know, we live in a world where everyone is trying to be perfect and actually it's just about being real. So that's where that's been a really exciting thing. And from, I also have done some stuff on Sky News talking about how powerful it is to have women in the army. So my, the way I want to finish this is just say, yes, I can. But most importantly to everyone here, yes, you can. If you have 
a dream, if you have a passion, then you have to believe in yourself and you can do that. And even though I'm dyslexic, this is deliberately spelt like this. Good health is real wealth. So thank you very, very much. That was, thank you. <laughs>